Welcome guys. So in this class, we are going to be working on registering our drivers. Okay. So our first task will be to design our register XML, right? So to do that, we're going to go to our layout and create a new file. We're going to call it register. Okay. Android layout. So I'm going to call this register. Okay, so as this is loading up, we can just go ahead and proceed, all right? Now, just to save us a lot of time, we actually don't need to be redesigning our registration page, right? We just need to head over to our Writers app and copy the registration XML. That's what we actually will be using to handle registration for our drivers as well. So guys, without spending much time, let's go to our Writers app and copy the design, the XML for the registration page. All right, so it is a writer's app. We're going to need to load up the XML register. Okay, so guys, let's just go ahead and copy this. So I'm going to go back to my driver app and paste this. So actually doing this poses some kind of challenges, right? Because we now we need to install this Nugget package before our circle image will resolve. Uh, we need to bring in most of our color resources before everything can start working appropriately. As you can see, this drawable image, we need to bring it in as well. So guys, let's jump right into it and get this done, okay? So the first thing we need to do will be to install this Nugget package, the circle image view. So let's go to our Nugget package manager and install the circle image view at once, okay? So we're going to go ahead and search for refracted circle image okay there we go so let's go ahead and install this so let's close this up now that we have the circle image so the next thing we need to do will be to bring in our color values right so to make this simple we are going to go to our writer app and copy the values in our colors the xml all right so guys let's go ahead and do that so this is my writer's app i'm going to go to color.xml I'm going to copy all of this, go back to your driver app, and go to my values and colors. So I'm going to paste all of this here. So the next thing we need to do will be to bring in our drawable image, all right? So this image as well, we can get it from the drawable folder of our rider app. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to create a drawable folder. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the value here. It's an existing item. Okay, so this is our Uber Rider folder. So let's go to our drawable. And there will be a lot of things that we need to add from there, okay? So I need a couple of stuff from here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and get the things that we need at once. So I need the center image, I need the cover image, I need these red balls. I need the icon image, I need the green marker, I need the splash SML, I need the uber round button, and I need the rounded edges, okay? So these guys, we're actually going to be making use of them just shortly to continue with other part of the application. So let's go ahead and add all of them. Bam, and we have them. So everything is now showing. So the next thing we want to do is to change this test here, I want to change it to Uber driver, okay? So this will be Uber driver. So the next thing we need to bring in will be the values in our strings.xml so that they can resolve, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So this is our writer's app. So we need to copy these two, okay? Mm, sometimes the copy and paste could be a pain in the ass, but no doubt, it actually makes your job, you know, much more faster, especially when you're reusing some stops. So this suffices for us. So the next thing we need to do will be to change our accent color, right? So we want something that is a little bit different from the writer's app, okay? So let's change our accent color to something better. So let's go to our color, the XML, all right? So our accent color, we're going to use something different. We're going to use hash 18BFF2. 
think this would be a light blue this will make more sense in this regard all right so guys all you're going to do now is to go ahead and build that up and ensure that everything stays together okay so let's build it first before we continue to the next segment boom congrats guys the build was successful so the next thing will be to create our registration activity and register our driver okay so let's close this i'm going to go to our solution explorer and create a new folder and call it activities all right this is just a way of ensuring that things are well kept organized all right so i'm going to call this call this new folder activities so i'm going to create a new activity i'm going to call this registration activity all right so this is going to be inheriting from app compact activity so the same process we followed when we were registering our rider that is the same thing we'll do for our driver okay so i'm gonna say text input layout so let's bring in this reference so what I want to do is to grab a reference of our text input layout, all right? So we have full name test, have phone test, have email test, have password test, we have a register button, and also we need a reference to our coordinator layout, root view, okay? Bam. So just because we like things being organized, we're going to create a new method and call it connect views so in this new method we are actually going to be referencing our views okay so i'm going to say void connect views so i'm going to say full name test is equal to full name test so we're going to do the same thing for our phone text which will be equal to phone test so let's do for email first so let's do that for password so we'll do the same thing for our root view okay a register button rather okay now we are done so the next thing will be to add a click event handler for our registration button so we're going to say register button dot click plus echo to and tab so this is our click event listener okay so when we click on register button we want to do some stuff right so let's go ahead and write a command so we're going to say string full name phone email password okay so let's continue guys i'm gonna say full name will be equal to full name test dot edit test dot test so our phone will be so we're gonna do the same thing for email address and for password okay so now we're done with this let's go ahead and set some flags right we don't want people to be providing data that are not up to standard right so we're going to set some flags for that so we are going to say if full name dot length is less than three okay so we're going to say snack bar dot make and this is the reason why we grabbed an instance of our coordinator layout i'm going to say please enter a valid name okay so it is going to be short i'm going to say show all right so this is our first flag our second flag will be so an accurate phone number should be at least greater than nine so this is what we have we're going to say valid phone number and this is what we're going to add return to it return okay so let's go ahead and do and do some checks for our email address so we're going to check if our emails contains the at sign, right? And the last one we're going to be doing for here will be our password. We want our password to be up to eight characters, okay? So here I'm going to say if password.length is less than eight. Please enter a valid password. Okay. All right. So at this point, we need an instance of our Firebase database and our Firebase authentication. Okay. So let's go to the top of our class, the top of our activity, and create a new variable 
that will hold our instance of our database and, and Firebase authentication as well, all right? So I'm gonna say Firebase database. So let's bring in this namespace. Okay, so I'm gonna call this database. So the next will be our Firebase authentication. So I'm gonna have Fire Auth. So let's bring in this namespace as well. Firebase Auth rather. So I'm gonna call this M Auth. So the next will be to get half an instance of our current user. So I'm gonna say Firebase user, current user, okay? So now that we've successfully created these variables, we need to assign values to them, all right? And we need to do this when our app is starting. So I'm going to create a new method. I'm going to call it setup Firebase. Okay. So at this point, database will be equal to app data helper. This is why we created our app data helper in the first place, right? So that it can actually be easier for us to have things like this. So I'm going to have get database and mauth will be equal to app data helper dot get firebase auth then current user will be equal to app data helper dot get current user so we are done with this so now that we've set up our firebase we need to call this here right before i forget i need to say set content view okay all right so now that we have done setting all this up, let's go ahead and register our driver. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to say mauth dot create user with email and password. All right. So I'm going to pass it our email address and our password. So this will go ahead and create our user for us. But that's not all. We need to add on success listener. So when our user is successfully authenticated, we can go ahead and have a callback that will help us do some other stuff. So at this point, we need to create a task completion listener, all right? So guys, to do this, we're going to create a new class for that. I'm going to go to my, my project folder and create a new folder. So this folder, we're going to call it event listeners. So I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it task completion listener. Okay. So I'm going to make this public. So guys, to be to save us some time, I'm going to go to our writers app and copy this chunk of code. Okay. So this is our task completion listener. It's actually very simple and straightforward. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of this, okay? I will explain the code, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull these references. Okay, so everything works. So what actually happens here is that we are implementing the I on success listener and I on failure listener interfaces, okay? So whenever our tax returns on failure, we'll trigger an event handler that will notify our activity that the process failed and the same thing for when it's successful as well. All right, so guys, let's go back to our registration activity and make use of our tax completion listener. This is very important that we do it this way because we are going to go ahead and reuse this particular class when we are logging in our user as well. So now we are here, we need to create a new instance of our task completion listener, all right? So let's just go ahead and make it a global variable. So let's pull in the namespace, okay? So I'm gonna call this task completion listener. And this should be equal to new task completion listener, all right? So let's scroll down and finish up with this. So I'm gonna say this task completion listener. So I'm gonna add failure as well. This task completion listener. So we're gonna say task completion listener dot successful. Okay, so this is what happens when our request was successful. So I'm going to use a lambda expression to handle this, right? So I'm gonna say OG 
in case you don't know this is how to use lambda expressions okay it is actually very shorthand and straight to the point so when the registration of the driver is successful we're just going to go ahead and perform the following task we're going to create a new database reference we're going to call it new driver reference new driver ref this will suffice and this will be equal to database dot get reference drivers okay slash plus m auth dot current user dot uid okay this is because once the registration is successful our current user will be the driver we just registered so we'll grab the uid and save the following information in this driver stable so i'm going to go ahead and create a new hash map so you guys remember that hash map is a key value object that we use to send data to our firebase so i'm going to bring in this namespace so i'm going to call this map and this will be equal to new hash map so i'm going to say map dot put these are the keys full name so the next will be our phone number so the next will be our email address and the last one will be the time we created we registered this driver all right so i'm going to say created at this will be equal to date time dot now dot to stream so we're going to change this to string okay so we're going to go ahead and say new driver ref dot set value we're going to pass it our map and finally we're going to start our main activity So this is what we will do when our registration is successful. So if our registration failed, we're still going to do something, right? So we're going to say the failure. Let's go ahead and also implement the lambda expression. So these two values are object and sender. You can actually use keyword or alphabet that you've not used in this particular code block, okay? So let's just go ahead and continue with this. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy this. When the registration failed, you can say could not be registered. I think this is a mild way of communicating, right? So this is all we need to do for now, right? So we're going to go ahead and set our startup activity to registration activity, right? And also we need to set up our team. So to do this, I'm going to go to my styles.xml. So instead of using this, I'm just going to go ahead and use the team that we defined in our, in our writer's app. Okay, now we are done. So we're going to go ahead and use this team instead. All right, so let's go to our registration activity. And I'm going to say team equal to at style slash Uber team. All right, so that's all we need to do. So we need to go to our main activity and change this. We don't want it to be main launcher anymore, okay? So guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and run our app and try to register a new driver, okay? Boom. So guys, as you can see, our Uber driver app is just well set for us so let's just go ahead and create a new driver our phone number will be okay our email address will be our password will be so later on we are going to be doing um a progress bar to actually indicate the progress of our registration all right boom so our our registration was successful but we need to see it for ourselves on firebase all right so this is our firebase console so we're going to click on database so let's expand this so this is the new driver we just created as you can see the information is the one we keyed in so i guess this is quite very straightforward so thank you for watching see you in the next class